It'll We've be decided slight. that that is totally irrelevant. That's right? gone. Parnell, for crying out loud, let's get back to it, huh? We have what to do. Let's get this stuff done. Nothing right. better to do on a rainy day than put together <laughs> some Red Arc equipment. Then build an 80 series. Uh, that's kind of what we're doing, you guys. So this is an update to two things. The console, the custom console that we're gonna build, and a quick update just on the kitchen where we're at with that. Um, we're about to do the final reveal of the kitchen in an upcoming video when it's back on the 80 and we've done all the electrical and stuff like that. Um, Parnell, we've set aside the console for a little while to work on the kitchen, but we're about to dive right in. What are we doing? So today what we're gonna do is get the cardboard mock-up of the front of the console against your existing dash. It'll We've be decided slight. that that is totally irrelevant, That's right? gone, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna remove the parking brake. Okay. And the parking brake will be electrically controlled underneath the vehicle with a solenoid with a switch in the center console. So that gives us a, another five inches of room to actually have a real center console. So I think it makes more sense. Right on. And the parking brake doesn't work the way it is anyway, so it's... it's Tired. If you guys are eighty series, to, it's yeah. Time to redo it. Uh, so both these units are going to live in the console. This will mm. live in the bottom, and you'll be able to get to it, but it won't be too easy. This will be very easy to get to all the fuses. So if any fuses burn out, you can easily change them. And we're also going to have a we're also going to have a bypass. We will have a bypass. So this is great solid state gear. But if we want to go back to solenoid uh, fuses and solenoids, we can't. The fuses and solenoids will stay exactly as they are. Yep. This is just going to send uh, the signal to the solenoid in parallel with the existing switch. Right. So you're going to get new switches that are in the center console that are just hard switches that, irrelevant to what position those are in, this thing will turn everything on or off. So if right. this fails, right. you're just going to use the switch. Right, so redundant. Yeah, and if Great. the switch fails, you're going to use this. If the relay fails, Replace it the fails. relay. Yeah, yeah, right. There's no, there's no backup for the relays. Okay. But they're a solid state relay, probably not a good chance they're going to fail. Okay. Uh, you've looked at, you've looked at this setup. I've done a very simple um, dual battery setup, about 70 bucks of parts. This is way beyond that. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it is overkill the, for my vehicle, um, but you've looked into it. Can yeah, you just I, briefly I, look, can you briefly say, Hey, this is what this does. And that's what that does. Yeah. So I, I, when you brought all this over the first time, I scratched my head and said, you've got to be out of your mind. Why would you invest? That's not the first time he said that this money in, in, in a system like this, it doesn't make that much sense until I started looking at doing my own E350 van and realized it, it is expensive, but it's totally worth it. So I'm actually buying my own, doing putting it in my van because if you look at all that this does, it does the switching, it does, right. you can use your phone, it does the battery charging, lithium, a AGM, lead acid, whatever you have, this does everything. And it's all in one nice, simple box. So, so. so we've got another, there's been another uh, high dollar item on the, uh, on, the, on the channel, many actually. And uh, one of them is our trauma kit, like our trauma med kit. And the reality behind the trauma med kit is you look at the price of a trauma med kit and you're like, wow, that's a lot of money. But then if you actually go out and price all the, the supplies that are in that kit and you do the math and you add it up, it ends up being more money than what that kit actually is. Yeah, and if you look at your time to do, oh, do all that, then it's twice right. what the kit costs right. because it's gonna take you forever to figure out what to put in there. So this, if you went out and said, hey, I could put this together, I could do this, I could do a battery ma monitor system, and you started to do everything that this will do, you'd end up You're, you're with... probably, actually, if you did everything this will do, you're probably gonna spend more money and it's not gonna work as seamlessly as this right. does. They have a really great app, um, and I'm not a huge proponent of app to turn the lights on yeah, and yeah, off, yeah. but 
you know, you're away either. from the vehicle, right. you want to turn the lights on and off, it, this, this will do that. Yep. It has a great little control panel. And I think one of the best things about the control panels is it's totally configurable. So this switch could be anything you want it to be, and you can change the icons of it. And if you look at just the one unit, which name escapes me now, that does six channels, and basically just a six channel remote switch. Yep. What's it called? It starts in S, S-Pod. S-Pod, and then there's another one, Switch Pro. Yeah, yep. those are both very expensive. Right. Um, and if you, t you know, this is expensive, but if you take that out of there, I, I really think it makes sense. This'll do uh, tank levels. It'll do, uh, you can connect your inverter to it. Yeah. Really great product. Yep. So the brain, the charge. So this yes. unit is, you can plug anything into it, whether it be solar or lithium or yes. AGM yep. Or, yep. So you, or shore power, yep. anything. You have your, your load and everything. And they use CAN bus, so all this stuff connects together with these CAN bus connectors. So you can have two of these if you want. Yep. You put one in the back, one in the front, which we might actually do here in the kitchen. We're not 100% sure yet. Yep. Uh, but it, it, great little system. Yep, okay. So that's power in to charge your stuff. This is the brain, this is the monitoring, and it's highly configurable. So that's yes. what we're putting in there, which leads us to, hey, it won't fit my vehicle and the custom center console. So with the center console, we gotta figure out what we're gonna do. Yeah, We with, don't quite know yet. With the, we're gonna, just from the first little mock-up we did of putting this in there, yeah. Once we put this all the way down against the floor, because we want to make sure we still have access to the shore power plug. Yeah. We want to, I'm, I can't imagine you doing it very often, but you can plug this into shore power and charge your batteries or whatever yep. you want. So that'll work for that too. Okay. So we need to build a bigger uh, center console. Bigger center console. So the center console, it needs charging ports for the radios. Yep. The Fang radios, we'll work on that. Uh, We're getting something different. Yeah, it uh, don't recommend. It those. needs it needs yeah. charging ports for the hams. Yep. Uh, it needs to have cup holders. Yep. It needs to have a some kind of din rail set up where you can mount things to, uh, and it has to have all of the hard switches that are going to be in parallel with the Red Arc system. The most important thing you listed is cup holders, clearly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because right now you got yeah. one. Right now, yeah. Yeah, and it's not driver great. only, uh, and it's hard to get to. <laughs> so, uh, uh, all of that, um, we're going to get a new head unit in the dash. That should be fairly straightforward. We're not needing to do a bunch of custom stuff there, but that'll be mapping and navigation. Um, and then, and we're going to relocate the existing uh, radios into the dash as well. Right. Um, and on the kitchen, so that's a center console, and then on the kitchen. We just have to put in the electronicals. Yeah, uh, build, really, the kitchen's just uh, building the two drawers, uh, doing the wiring. Yep. And then the kitchen is 100% done, yeah. and you just got to bolt it on the back. Right on. And we'll do a uh, walk around of that. We'll, we'll check it out. It's pretty, pretty darn cool if you guys have not seen it yet. Um, what else am I forgetting? I just want to make the little part for the front and the back so I can start modeling the right. center console. Right and the center console is either going to be fiberglass over foam mm -hmm. uh, or it's going to be fiberglass over carbon reinforced nylon printer filament. Right on. So going down the rabbit hole of these center consoles that people are putting in vehicles, which I had always just kind of thought, oh, just simple little, you know, we'll print something up or make something that's very similar oh my goodness. Okay. to your existing console. Yeah. But it kind of seems like that's not what anyone does. People are building ones like, this is kind of my second generation of what I was thinking. Okay. Uh, not is so big, but so a, a platform out of, like that guy's using tubular steel. If you look at a bunch of the Kibbe Tech, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Kibbe Tech. Uh, they build these just amazing trucks. And so he's got a bunch of uh, center consoles that he's done. Seems to be the other popular thing is, you know, formed aluminum. Uh-huh. Another Kibbe Tech with all the switches and everything. Okay, that's a race car. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I'm kind of thinking we do a structure similar to this, but okay. it only fits in your space. Yep. And the underside of it is all of the wiring 
any relays that we need to put in there, anything else. And then the piece that fits on top looks more like this that's wrapped in something. Great. So basically, yep. we're kind of doing something similar, a sort of cross between a racing car and a luxury car. Um, so this is the other thing that you see tons of is uh -huh. people are building them out of MDF and then fiberglassing them. Okay. And so that's M MDF underneath it. It just doesn't look like MDF anymore now that right. it's uh, covered in something. Right. Well, there's one covered in leather, but I'm sure that's MDF underneath. Yeah. But MDF underneath, I don't think is appropriate for your vehicle because it's your vehicle is going to bang around and the MDF is going to fall apart. Right. So we need to make something a little bit more durable. And I still think the carbon fiber nylon covered in something probably makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what we should do today is take just one more look, make sure we're building it in the right space. We don't have any problems. Then I can go ahead and mock up some side panels out of cardboard, then put them in the computer okay. so I can recreate them. And my thought of the recreation is that I'm sure once you show this, people are going to want them. And if we can offer them the plans and hey, here's like the drawer system, yep. you know, 20 people have built that drawer system. So I think I wouldn't normally cat out something that was a one-off because it just right. doesn't make any sense. But like the drawer system, doing it enabled a bunch of other people to build it as well for nothing. They could just right. do I, DIY, do it themselves. Great. Great. All right, let's do it. Okay. I bet we're real close to a 15 inch radius on the head on the side of this. I think so I'm gonna use a, a 30 inch diameter on that. Yeah, I'm just making a little hard model that we can push against the front of that to make sure it's the right size. That was fast. Hard work. So this is the back panel, and this is the front panel. Way more than enough space to get in and out of the wires. This would be all well within the console up here. You can see where it's not level, but we still have you know quite a bit to play around with. And then there'll be a door. When you pop the top of the console off, you'll basically see all this. So the console is two pieces. It's one piece. It's the bottom console, um, which I would actually like to make. See if we can't figure out how to do that next time you come over. A harder version of what we've got here. Uh, which we'll have to go ahead and template the floor. Not, it doesn't need to touch the floor perfectly, but it kind of needs to go between that point and there's a few obstructions to this point up here. If level from there to there, it's, it's going to be basically, this is going to get cut down to a thin piece here. Uh, because the whole thing is too tall. Okay. Okay, okay. So what we've got now is this piece is going to end here. It's going to come around here. I'm glad I thought about making it out of just one solid piece because it's going to be much more uh, highly optimized. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you turn on your audio, because then people will have sound. In the 80, it is two pieces, the back piece and then the the piece right underneath the dashboard. Arnell looked at it and said, let's just make it out of one piece and we'll have much more flexibility. It'll just be better, it'll be stronger and more flexibility to add whatever we want. So that's what we're doing.
we can put that in there. That's doable. So you have, there's plenty of room to get to it. We got some dimensions in the computer machine. We got a cardboard mock-up in the rig. So I'll, I'll try and make that break and see if it works with driving around yeah, and stuff. Yeah, I think that's the key. Okay. Uh, we got the cup holders laid out. This is the sort of final layout. I'll just... So that's uh, basically that's the whole thing. Got it. Uh, this is the one inch, inch and a half thick top that's going to hinge yep. up. Cool. Uh, it's going to have a pocket back here for the radios. Yep. Then yeah, the kickback for the people's feet down there, where that's not going to bother them. You're going to have a couple cup holders. We're going to put a track in here. We're going to put a dock for your phone. Uh, may put some switches on this front panel, and then you don't see it, but the panel that connects to the dashboards up here. I think this is going to be a lot more functional than just trying to do a center console that lived within their original space. A million times better. Yeah. Right on. And not much more difficult to make. Yeah, cool. So. Cool. All right. Win-win. And then next step, we're going to make a hard model? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to continue working on these, and the next step is to actually make a hard model of this part. Great. Uh, this top lid's going to be printed, I think. Okay. So I want that to be rounded a little bit. Okay. Uh, and then I'll just do a hard plywood for the rest of it. We'll yep. put in the cup holders where they should be, uh, and then give her the final test. I think we'll put that hard model in there and let it sit in there a couple days out of yeah. wood and let you just make 100% sure that's what you like. And if it is... Bob's your uncle, and we'll put, her together. put the whole thing together. Right on. Great. Good Great. progress. Yeah, well, yeah. Not where we started, but I think better. But end better. Result. Yeah. That's right. And cool. once this is done, we'll have all the plans available as well. So. Great. Great. Awesome. I'm going to go. <laughs>so that's what we're doing step by step uh, and what we take some measurements we 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 do the things we throw the stuff in the truck we get the <laughs>